Hello lovelies! So today we're going to be making a usual suspect in any Arabic kitchen and that is kousa mehshi, which is stuffed courgette, zucchini, marrow, it has so many names uh, very confusing, unless there's a difference that I'm not aware of, but anyway, so let's get cooking. And this is a really, really easy recipe. It's a family favorite and we do it a lot at home. This is my mommy's recipe. I miss you, mommy. And uh, it's amazing. So let's start. First, we have to core our kusas. So take your kusa and cut off both ends. Then you take magic core and you start mm, you'll see it's going to come out really nicely now you need to be careful not to poke the skin so the great thing about stuffed kusa is that nothing goes to waste and i have a video on my youtube where you do ajje which is an omelet with the inside so the core of the kusa and it's super yummy so don't worry about this it's not going to go to waste now to our meat and rice mixture. We have half lamb and half beef. This is about 600 grams. So I know some people use lean meat, but honestly, for me, kusa, when the meat is fattier, it's just yummier. So it's up to you, but don't blame me if it tastes dry. We're going to add cumin, seven spice and baharat. So seven spice is seven different spices. It's very, you find it in any supermarket. And um, then you have baharat, which is nine spices in this case. So we add both. Then, just one garlic clove and cinnamon. So the reason I'm putting cinnamon is that sometimes the meat has a little bit of a zancha. Zancha is like that taste that you might not like in lamb. And cinnamon has a way of removing that. So we're adding that. Little bit of vegetable oil, just a little bit, some black pepper, some salt, and then we go and mix. Make sure it's all well incorporated. Now we have Egyptian rice, so I've rinsed it, and you don't want to put too much. My mom always says just a handful. If you want though, you can put quinoa instead of rice. And I've done that before. Um, super yummy, super good. I know a lot of you are gonna say, ah, oh, raw meat, but you know what? I eat kimbine, I eat steak tartare, and on top of it, there's an egg in there. So I like to taste it, because the way this tastes is the way my kusas will taste. So if there's not enough seasoning or not enough salt, not enough pepper, I'll get annoyed later, so. Mm. Now, you take your kusas and you start filling them. Now you can use a teaspoon and la la la, but this is just the easiest way to do them. And once you feel resistance, you stop, because you don't want to overstuff them. If you overstuff them, they will pop as they're cooking. If you like this video, please do subscribe. Um, you know, you always hear YouTubers say that, but it does take quite a bit to do these videos, so we appreciate all the love. Okay, so I'm gonna start doing this, and then I will place it in my little pot. So, see you in a bit, because I've got a bunch of kusas to stuff. So we finished stuffing our beautiful kusas, and now we're going to make the sauce. So you could do two things if you only want to use one pot. You could make the sauce here and then drop the kusas in. But I think that it gets messy because it like splashes everywhere, and then it doesn't really align nicely when I put my plate. So I'm gonna move this to the side and make our little sauce. So we've melted some butter in here, and now I'm going to add tomato paste. And the thing about tomato paste is, I know a lot of people put it in water and then put it in a sauce, but I feel that tomato paste really needs to be cooked out to get that like metallic-y taste out. So 
put it in your butter and start like frying it in there. So really cooking it. We'll also start adding our spices. So I've got cumin, I've got the bharat and the seven spice again. I'm gonna add this here. We need a generous amount of salt, pepper. So all these beautiful spices are starting to smell up the kitchen really, really yummy. So every Middle Eastern household has their particular kusa mahshi recipe. This is mine, so you might see a little bit of variations here and there. This is so good. I also like to, always when there's tomato, I like to add a tiny bit of sugar. Now water. just to cover them. And then you take a plate and you press it down. Because what you want is them to cook, but not really to steam. You want to allow that sauce to reduce. So we're going to add some yumminess to our sauce. So you take about five or six garlic cloves, and then we add dried mint, lemon juice, mix, mix, mix generous amount of pepper, generous amount of salt. And this, you pour over your kusa, like when they're about halfway done. So, take off the plate, take our little sauce and pour it over. And then, give it a little shimmy shimmy. Back in there. And let it cook until it's done. So our kusa is ready. It's all cooked through and I also let it sit a little bit because you just need every type of food that you have. Just make sure you let it sit a bit because imagine if you were in like hot waters and suddenly you came out, you'd feel all... So food needs time to get back to normal. So you can serve this with, with yogurt if you want. Thank you.